Austin County Jail Museum in Belleville. This, this was always the parlor, but this was a bedroom and this was a bedroom. And up until then, they didn't stay here 24-7. It was more like maybe one day, two days out in a week. But then after 1926, they, they stayed here and the family was here and everybody was here. Um, the kitchen used to be outside, and so those two bedrooms became the kitchen and the dining room. So as you come through here, you're going to notice that everything is exposed because they brought in the electricity. You know, it wasn't in the bricks. They brought in the um, plumbing. Um, the walls are 18 inches thick to keep it cool in the um, summer and warm in the winter. This is the original woodwork, and the reason it looks so nice is because at one time it had paint, several coats of paint. You know, because instead of going through and um, sanding it, they'd go through and just put another coat of paint yeah, on it. This was yeah. a jail back then. Right. So, um, as we go through, we're going to go to the um, the dining room now, which is now our little gift room. But we use this as a rotating um, exhibit, and the exhibit that we have here is about um, William Preston Longley. And William Preston Longley was an infamous, notorious outlaw, um, out, out, um, right out um, right after the uh, Civil War, same era as Billy the Kid. So um, some of the groups started the Concordia Gazon Green. That means Concordia Gazon Singing Green uh, Club. Um, and this is the piano that they had bought to, um, for, for their club, and it was brought from New York. It was, um, it was passed down to Hildegard Schumann. Her father was Fritz Schumann, who, um, of course, was um, the president of the Gesangverein. And she had it in her home until she passed away, and she gave it to the Bell Historical Society, and now it's here in, um, in, in our uh, jail. We have the official Texas historical markers on the markers that are in Austin County, or in the, or actually, I think all of Texas. All of Texas are in there. So, um, as we go through here, this is the kitchen. Of course, these were the two bedrooms mm -hmm. before this became the dining room, and this was the kitchen. It was a jail from 1982, so it had all the modern conveniences. But when we got our historical marker, we we put in it to be you know 1800 period oh, yeah. um, appliances. When I say appliances, yes, this is a stove, but it, again, it doesn't have electricity. It's a wooden stove. So see, you can, just, you can pick this up, you can stoke it, put that on here, and cook, and cook on top of your stove. These are irons, this is five pounds, this is a seven pound iron, so what they would do is of course they would heat their iron up, and then they would of course mm -hmm. iron them. And of course, we go get our knives and forks from Macy's or a department store. They would go to their local blacksmith. Now, your stems would be one mold, but then your spoon and your fork would be another, and then they would attach them here, and your blacksmith would sign back here. Yeah, this is stamp. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, We've got machetes, you know, everyone would keep their lawns nice and trim with their machetes instead of the lawnmower. 
We have a pump that we uh, we have it next next to this to show you that yes, we have running water, but back then, you know, the pipes didn't come into the house. You had to go out to the pump and pump your water, then bring your water in. This is Chesley Street. The second jail was just a long cabin. And the uh, theory was, don't put a, a, a door in there and they won't escape. So they would have stairs that go up, they put a ladder down, they would go down the ladder and they pull the ladder up. Yeah. What they didn't realize is the weapons that they would hide in these logs and they learned how to dig out. So the last invoice from this, uh, this jail was for an iron floor. <laughs> <laughs> This is Buster Goodman, he brought all of his badges. But we also have um, dedicated this to all the prisoners we've had, all the criminals that have gone through this jail. These are things that we've taken off prisoners. This is a bed slab. When you go upstairs and see the jail cells, you'll see that this is a bed slab that was broken off and made into a, um, a uh, they're called shanks, thank you. Um, these are some iron knuckles. We did have one hanging in this jail. Gus Davis was hung here. He killed um, William Schlins on the square in front of the True Blue Saloon over, they think, a pay dispute. It was December 23rd, 1900, and so it was during Christmas uh, shopping season, so everyone saw him. They wrestled the gun away from him, and then he was hung uh, March 14th, 1901. This is the actual, um, it's not that, it's a replica of the noose, but this is where he was hung. This is the gallows. It's five stories up. Now, there was a plate, an iron plate that he stood on, which is not there anymore. But on this side of the gallows, you'll see the gate. He walked out on the gate, and there was an iron plate, and when you hit a lever, it, it drops. So, the executions were done in the counties back then. But now, of course, they're in Huntsville. Um, he was hung by um, Sheriff Palm. Uh, he said goodbye, Gus, and it, he kicked the lever, and there he went. And he probably dropped in front of some of the prisoners, because if you look and see, there's second floor jail cells, third floor jail cells, fourth floor is just um, open. Uh, supply room and then their gallows. So he could have dropped in front of some of these prisoners. But we did have a double hanging the year that they were building this jail. If you go out of Holland, which is this street right here, um, you'll see uh, a stand of pines right before you get to the railroad tracks. And so this is where the double hanging took place. One Buck Chapel um, killed a lady as she was coming back from selling her cotton in Brenham, so she had money and he held her up. She went to, she took the reins of the, of the buggy and went to the minister's house in Kenny and he, he she uh, identified him. Then we had Clem Strother who killed a man in Waller County over a pay dispute. He thought he was shooting him in the head, but he shot him in the knee and changed his bed around. Now, one thing um, about this one is that where the True Blue Saloon is. So when you leave, the True Blue Saloon was at Main and Holland. So it's Patty Corner right there. And as you, it, what it is now is an old filling station, but back then it was the True Blue Saloon. So when you go out there, you'll see where the True Blue Saloon is. Three days later, so he wasn't sheriff in any long. 
We have A.J. Rimmert. You can see that he was a uh, sheriff, 1921 to 32, right after what World War One. So, where who did we fight during World War One? Was Germany. Where are all your German immigrants here? So the Ku Klux Klan thought that they were going to come here and kind of, you know, ruffle up some feathers or you know cause some problems. So A.J. Rimmer gets wind of this. So he puts his deputies on top of the buildings and then to the entrance to the town he says, Ku Klux Klan not welcome. So we didn't they didn't come. <laughs> but we that's an interesting story about him. As you can see, T.A. Maddox, the, he has his pearl handled gun, which we have his pearl handled gun there. I want you to see these guns before you leave. <laughs> She was. So that was the uh, where the, he got hung at, right there. Less primitive in the 1890s. Mm -mm. I should shower. So you um just kind of went here in front of everybody. There's more gel cells on the third floor.
headed to Bryan College Station. We are about 15 minutes away till we get to our hotel. We are in room 309 at the Lake Delta Inn and Suites in College Station. You first walk in, here's your little um, microwave, little coffee bar, refrigerator. Here's your bathroom. Let's see where's the light switch at. Here we go. Here's your bathroom. Here's your closet. And we have two queen beds. So you have your two queen beds. Here's your different outlets by the bed. And here's your TV. And they have breakfast, um, a pool. That's outside. Here's the pool area. 